Yo, Tom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have I got a horror hookup story for you? You do. All right. Well, hold on. I do want every detail, but welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over 50 gay male hosted by two over 50 gay men. Hello, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And today we're going to talk everything about hooking up as mature gay men. What is a hookup? What does that actually look like? And how do you hook up? How does it work? And also, is hooking up enough? Is there a reason why some men would rather hook up than date? I don't know. We'll find out. All right, Michael. I'm ready for this hookup story. Go for it. All right. Well, not too long ago, um, I was in a mood and I was on scruff. And, you know, occasionally us single guys need just physical contact and some intimacy. It's just a part of who we are. So this guy hit me up and we sort of made arrangements to meet. I was going to go over his place. Um, And when I got there, knocked on the door, someone completely different answered the door and i was like um hi is 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 your friend home (laughs) is jeff here um and he was like yeah come on in he's in the living room so he leads me into the living room and there jeff is sitting on the couch in a wrestling onesie doing lines off the coffee table and I was like, in my head, there was like, you know, when the record screeches across the needle yeah. screeches oh, yeah. across the right. Yeah, that's what happened. Um, and he was like, oh, have you met my husband? Oh. And it was another one of those moments where I was like, um, no, because there was no conversation about a third. And it was like, oh, this is my husband and he's going to be joining. And I was like, um, Okay, so first of all, this wasn't a conversation, so I don't really know how I feel about this. Right. And second of all, in big letters in my profile, I have no partying. So for me, this whole thing is a non-starter now. So I'm just going to go. And then the gentleman in the onesie <laughs> got really bitchy with me. Ooh. And he was like, well, now I feel like you're judging us. And I was like, um, no. You were dishonest. You didn't tell me there was going to be another person here. And you're partying. Not something I choose to partake in, and I don't like being around people who do. Period. End of sentence. I'm not judging you. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do when I leave. Bottom line is I'm here, and I don't feel comfortable, so I'm going to take off. And at that point, his husband interjected and was very nice about it. And he was like, Jeff, calm down. This just isn't going to work. And... I proceeded wow. to leave. So, yeah, that's, that's one uh, of the major uh, pitfalls about hookups. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, I am so confused. Uh, um, I was too. <laughs> I'm confused about this whole thing about hooking up. I mean, I have to make a confession. I've never had a hookup. I've never, or as we called it back in the dark ages, you know, a one night stand. I've never even had one of those. Um, and I, I'm thinking that a hookup is kind of... The same thing, is it? It's exactly the same thing. So, all right. So for me, and for most of our listeners or watchers already know this, I've been married for a really long time. I have not been a single person in over 35 years, 36 years. Uh, This whole idea of hooking up is so foreign to me. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. So hooking up. It's basically just having sex with someone, right? Uh, is that yeah, all? I mean, that's, it, it is like a one-night stand where, you know, you would meet somebody and the initial intent is just sex. Right. And sometimes you hit it off and, you know, you wind up seeing each other again. And sometimes it is just that ships that pass in the night. Yeah. So, all right. So, um, like you... you Again, back in the dark ages, you would meet people out at bars or whatever and then go home with them. So, But now it's a whole different world. Um, so what if you like showed up and the, and the dude in the onesie was like your dentist? Or like, 
Do you know already who they are, or is it just well, a shot know, in the dark? I, you should, because yeah. pictures are exchanged. Usually somebody has a picture in their profile, so you, you, you know who it is you're meeting. Now, right. granted, a lot of times those pictures could be 20 years old, and so <laughs> when you get there, because that has happened too, you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know. Um, right. And again, it's, I, I have no problem saying this is a situation that's not going to work for me and leaving. Um, really? Yeah. And, and that's, so that's okay. Like, well, it's that, not that sometimes, happens? well, if somebody's being dishonest in the first place and is, is putting some, putting themselves off as something that they're not. And again, a 20 year old picture is one of those things. Right. There's a level of dishonesty, even, even though it's a sort of one shot deal, um, that just doesn't work for me. I'm sure there are a whole lot of people who would rally and go, eh, I'm here, why not? That's not me. <laughs> okay. Um, and it, it never has been because for me, like upfront and honest is for me majorly important, even in the, you know, even in a hookup. Um, so again, when you're hooking up and you're meeting someone in person, you have you know what they look like. You have that conversation of like, yeah, I, I, I'm not doing drugs. I'm I I don't want to do a three way with your husband. Um, but when it's all being done online, do you have that back and forth like yes. the negotiation stuff? Yeah, is it pretty, is it like know, negotiating? Well, usually you talk about what the person is into. A lot of times that's in the profile, so it's not even a it's, it, that doesn't even come into the equation, but. Right. You know, I like to have a little back and forth with somebody personally, just because I get a feel for, you know, and granted, it's only in a text message, but you can get a sense of how somebody writes something, maybe a little bit more about who they are than just a picture. Right. So, um, you know, and basically those days where the hookup would happen in a bar are pretty much long gone because now it's like online shopping. You just sort of scroll wow. through picture after picture. And it, it's crazy to me, right? Um, but I guess how, how, how easy is that, right? You choose what you like. It's like shopping. You like this pair of shoes. I like this color. I like yeah. this style. Uh, but then it's like you have to do the... Um, so this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Yeah. This is, you know, yeah. It's a dance, you yeah. know. Um, what what I do miss about it is the, you know, back in the Stone Age when we were younger and out, out and about, you got to do that with the person in front of you and get a an actual feel for who the person was. Right. So by the time you went home with the person, there already was a little bit of intimacy sure. that was yeah. formed. Makes where sense. now it's not. Now it's just cold and sterile. And for me, a lot of times that's a problem. But like I said, you know, a lot of us single folks do crave intimacy yeah. and human contact. So sometimes it's just a necessary evil. And that particular night, it happened to be. And I, ironically, you know, it was a train wreck. Um, and that's OK, because I laughed. And, you know, when I got in my truck, I literally took a minute and went, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and then had to okay. laugh because I'm like, and this is why I want to meet somebody for coffee before the hookup, because wow. yeah, yeah, it's just, you know. So, uh, so you get there, like let's say you, you match somebody or you whatever on on one of these apps, and you you set this time you're going to go there, and uh, if they're not sitting there in a onesie doing coke, you know, um, is there a conversation before? Do you, do you with set me? Yes. Guidelines? With yeah. me? Yes. I, I usually. We'll have some sort of conversation with them. A lot of people don't. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are just like, okay, let's go. And then it's a bing, bang, boom, and you're in and you're out. Um, literally. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, you know, I think it, it varies from person to person. I can only speak from my experiences and what I require, even in the context of a, you know. Right. Hookup. It, it, it's just it's just me. I, I like a little bit of something before the actual, you know, let's sure. hit the sandbox and, and play. Well, OK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, so I don't even know. Like, I don't even know. Um, what about like, are you ever 
nervous or scared about what you're walking into like that to me i would be like but you know i'm a big major wuss yeah. so um there were definitely you know red flags which again is why i like to have a little conversation with somebody yeah um in the context of the text messages that we're sending because you can get a feel there have been a number of situations that were like oh no this is way too sketchy it's not going to happen yeah and usually if you're going to someone's house you know there's probably a little bit more security there um at least in my head but yeah and again if i arrive at a situation and something doesn't feel right in my gut i'm out well like there's like what you talked about the guy in the onesie and you're like no this is not happening let me just say you know the onesie was to paint a bigger picture you know it was (laughs) embellishment i don't care if somebody's in a onesie it doesn't matter to me you know they're sexy on the right person it just um, makes it so like visual to me. I wanted, I really wanted to make it a vivid picture for you, Tom, and I'm, because I I'm know how much you like, like that. A yellow and purple onesie for whatever reason. I don't okay, know. Okay, we'll why. stick with that. It wasn't, yeah. but we're gonna. Yeah, we'll, okay, you, you keep the yellow and purple. <laughs> just because that's head. hideous to me. But okay, <laughs> great. You know, it all right. To, it more had to do with the lines and the husband that weren't sort of yeah disclosed you know, that, to me. Because again, in big letters in my profile. Um, and it's weird because I didn't have to do this until I moved to Palm Springs because there's, there's a lot of it here. There's a lot of partying here. I never had it in my profile. Really? In LA? No. Nope. Wow. Okay. And when I moved here, it was, you know, now, you know, usually my second question, because sometimes people don't read a profile, it is, have you been partying? And it's like, no. Oh. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Works for me. But then, you know, when you get there and their eyes are as big as like saucers and they're bouncing off the walls, you're like, oh, yeah, I got to go. Well, uh, and I mean, partying, I think of drugs, but I know you don't drink. It, same thing. Like if you show up and some guy's like pouring vodka out of his onesie, you know. That... I, don't, I don't mind if somebody has a cocktail or a beer, because usually when you, you know, if you do go into someone else's environment, they ask you if you want something to drink. Right. So that's no, it's the it's the partying. Um, and it, again, you know, it's the crystal meth, the, right. the K, the there's a whole lot of stuff where you could it just changes a person's entire being. And I would rather be with the person than the, the drug that they're on. Yeah, oh, that totally makes a lot of sense. I mean, of course. Uh, OK, another weird question. But like, what if you show up and. You know, like with the story you told us, it, it was someone totally different that opened the door. But what if somebody opens the door and you're like, um, is your thinner, younger brother here? The guy I saw the picture of? Like, what would you do if if the picture was totally not that person? Um, well, like I said, that situation has happened. Yeah. And, you know, I understand that all of us have an image of who we are in our own head. And that may not be what the world sees. <laughs> Definitely um, not in my world. Yeah. And I, I respect that for people. And I'm in a situation like that. I'm like, I wouldn't leave while I was standing at the door. I'll go in, I'll start a conversation. We'll have, and then I'm like, you know, I'm just not feeling this for us. So I'm just going to take off. But it was really nice meeting you. Um, okay, that's cool. And and that's an okay thing to do to after you get there and you're like, you know what, just not feeling this. Yeah. And, and no one, I, people are okay with that. Abs- yeah. For the most part, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, cool. You know, because, uh, I, you know, and that's one thing we all have to acknowledge too. Sometimes we're not going to be the other person's type when we're right. standing in front of them. A picture is a whole nother story. So... You know, I've been on the other side of that where it's like, you know, I'm just not feeling the vibe. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. It's, it's all good. Yeah. I would hope that most of the guys who are our age have sort of figured that out and are okay with it as well. Because, right. you know, it's not, you shouldn't take it personally if someone's not physically or sexually attracted to you. You know, it doesn't take away from who you are as a person. It just means in that one situation, something didn't click and that has right. to be okay. Yeah. Great. So bottom line is it's just be honest with it about everything, who you are, what you want to do, what's, you know, going to happen. And yeah, great. All right. Okay, cool. Um, All right. So now I I basically kind of can see what that hookup thing looks like. Now, the next 
area we got to figure out is how does it work? Uh, so you say hookups in person really aren't working. It's all online. Um, so it, it's to the, to the apps, right? So everyone is using apps. Um, I know if, you, if you've been listening to us or watching us, guys, you know that Michael is teaching me so much and I've learned so <laughs> many new things about woof on scruff and sniffies. Like I am so hooked in uh, to hookups now. Um, but one of our uh, comments on YouTube, and we have so many great guys who are leaving so many amazing comments yeah, absolutely. Um, to us. Really great. An older gentleman, older than us, which is hard to believe, but um, was saying that he feels that the apps are geared more towards the younger guys. Are you finding that? You know, I think a large part of that would be where you're located. Okay. Here in Palm Springs, it's not at all an issue. You know, in my profile, I also say I prefer guys over the age of 45 because that's just me. Um, but it doesn't prevent younger guys from, you know, sending me a message or, you know, hitting me up. or it, And that's fine. So, no, I don't find it. But I could see if you're in a, a more rural or, you know, a little bit more outside of a city where that might be an issue. But okay. here in Palm Springs, it's definitely not. So I, I, I can't speak to that experience. Okay. Is, is there a, cause again, I know scruff, I know sniffies. Uh, what, Grind, what's grinder, another one you told me about? Grinder. Grinder. Oh yeah. That's the big one, right? That's, is that the main one? Um, uh, grinder is probably the biggest one. It's scruff and grinder are the two biggies. Okay. So is there, um, like, to me, from the outside, scruff, I think of guys who are like, you know, scruffy and yeah. really masculine and, you know, whatever. Um, is there a particular app for geared towards maybe the more mature men, men in their 60s or 70s? Um, like a hookup act like Grinder or Scruff, um, I have yet to find it. But there's a dating app for guys who are who really want to date, and this is what I would suggest for that gentleman who wrote that and is finding that experience. Um, it's called Hinge, you know, just like a door. It's called Hinge. Um, <laughs> go on that, okay. and I just I, wow, I just thought about that name for the first time. Um, and so go on that and create a profile because it's more geared toward dating. And I know hookups do happen through Hinge as well, because some people will have that in their profile. Right. Um, that they're open to hookups. But Hinge is, his, Hinge is definitely directed to people who are a little bit more serious about dating. And it tends to be guys who are over the age of 40, 45. So I'm going to suggest for that person to, to check Hinge out. Maybe he'll okay. have a, a little bit more luck. Well, maybe we should start a whole new app for that guy who is over 50 or over 60 or over 70, you know? Maybe yeah. that's the next thing that we should be. You just into. gave someone a million dollar idea that they're going to take oh. and run with it. Damn All right. you. That's fine as long as you hire us to be your spokesperson. <laughs> yes. Or um, at least give us some sort of creative kickback there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Um, all right. So you, you've mentioned a number of times. It's in my profile. It's in my profile. Uh, so in your profile, it's very important to... to it, Describe yourself, I guess, right? Yes. You know, um, you give your stats, your height, your weight, your right. age, um, all that stuff. Um, so being of our age, when I was just coming into my sexuality, AIDS was also coming into the world. And so that was a really scary thing uh, for all of us. And I personally am still afraid of any sort of STD, um, you know, that's why I'm in this committed relationship that I'm in. Right. Is that a um, concern for the guys out there on the apps? All of, all of the apps are very responsible in regard to that. They have yeah. a section on your health. Okay. Um, you know, and you give a laundry list of this is, this is, this is my status, this is where I am. I'm vaxxed, I have monkeypox shots, I, you know, and all that stuff. So that's, 
That is within the context of the app and kudos to the app makers for including that stuff. Right. Because it, it does allow a level of openness that uh, might be a little bit more uncomfortable if it weren't there. Because it is, you get to see it before you reach out to somebody. But because it's, I, can you trust everybody? I mean, that that's something else. Again, I'm the big wuss. I'm going to fear yeah. everything. Um, can you trust all these people? Especially you show up and the guy's, you know, wearing a toupee and he's got his girdle on. And, you know, like, can you trust that man? You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah. But so, yeah. you know, because, again, when I think about this, it's like, holy crap, how did this happen? I've been out for... 40 years. Oh, it's been longer than 40. 1980, summer of 1981. Yeah. So, oh, right. shit, 43. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, eh. uh, so when I was younger, I think I obsessed about it more, but there seemed, there, you know, fortunately, our community took responsibility for a lot of things and talking about if you're a single person, talking about health issues became the norm. Um, you know, and I've been in relationships in and out of those years, probably totaling a decade all in all, all in all. But, you know, from the 80s and the 90s, we our community took the shame away from talking about health issues and that's pretty much the norm now can you trust everybody completely obviously not and i think that's one of those things where we do need to follow our gut because yeah. um, in the 80s and 90s people weren't always being honest about their status um because there was a stigma and because there was a shame attached sure so does it exist now i think it's way less um, okay. But again, Great. you know, proceed with caution in any situation. That's, that, you know, that's life, right? Right. Um, and again, if your gut says something, trust it because it's usually dead on. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great advice. Fantastic. All right. Now I've got a really tough question, though. Um, mm. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> it's not an intriguing, tough question. It's, is hooking up enough? You know, you said that every once in a while, people, you know, single guys, they crave that intimacy. They crave, you know, physical touch. Is hooking up that one night, is that enough to fulfill you? You know, is it enough physical touch? Is it enough intimacy? Um, or does it just get you through till the next time? Well, I can, you know, I could speak for me. Um, sure. Is it enough for me in the moment? Yes. Yeah. In the long run? No. Because me personally, I do love being in a relationship or dating someone exclusively and for you know an extended period of time because I like the level of comfort that comes along with that and right. safety. And you know, you get to open up to somebody, you get to share things, you get to learn things about somebody else and in a hookup. That doesn't happen. Yeah. So for me, the hookup. I want to say is a necessary evil and I want to take all of the connotation out of the word evil um, because it's not, they're glorious, but um, you know, I'm just using a phrase that's been around for a bazillion years um, that it does. It helps bridge the gap in between those intimate relationships. Right. Because again, you well, know, we're human. We we crave human oh, contact. Definitely. It's just yeah, definitely. it's just who we are. So we did a show on our last season about dating after fifty, and we got so much response yeah. from that show. It was amazing, um, but it was the responses were all over the place. There were guys that you know, guys over fifty who are really into dating, really want to find that relationship. So many, though, were, you know what? No, thank you. I don't want the relationship. Dating's not worth it to me. I'm just going to just gonna be hooking up. And so some of those comments, you know, were like, no, I'm giving up. 
they were making me a little sad reading some of them. And then others were like, you know, fuck that dating shit. I'm happy just hooking up. And, you know, um, so that, that's why I'm asking the question. And I know you're, you have your life and your experiences, but, you know, you've hooked up with enough guys out there to see other people and, and their experiences and their thought pattern. Um, so I guess for some people, hooking up is enough. Um, you know, maybe they find their intimacy or their whatever through friends, uh, you know, or um, I don't know. I, this is just a part of the hookup world that really confuses me. Yeah. And let, let me say something, because, you know, yeah. for all of those guys who did write those comments where I'm done, I've given up on it. I don't ever want to be in a relationship again. They're exhausting, whatever. I have been there. I, I mean, I have driven that road so many times, my tires are bald, where it's like, I'm just <laughs> done. I hate people. I just don't ever want to do this again. Because especially if you are in love with the person, when it ends, there's major grief that goes along with that. But, and in those moments, I've said, oh, fuck this, I'm not doing this again. Yeah. But um, when I get to the other side, I realize that for me, it was all worth it. And that I'm never giving up on that. I don't care how old I am. I don't ever want to be that cynical or closed off that I wouldn't give somebody that the opportunity if it arises. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Um, and we've certainly got a lot of responses of guys just like you. So, yeah. you know, more power to all of you. But also then, you know, more power to the guys who are like, no, fuck this shit. I'm done with it. And Absolutely. I'm really good with just hooking yeah. up. Um, and again, it, I, get, I get that mindset because it is exhausting, you know. But isn't, isn't hooking up exhausting too? I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into it, isn't there? Yeah, not really. Oh. <laughs> that's okay. The, that's the sad reality. No, because it is like online shopping. Eh. Yeah, but I don't know. For me, I would be like before the hookup, I'd be, you know, and then I'd picking my outfit, my onesie that I'm going to go in, you know, on the... I, I the, would, purple, the purple and yellow one? Exactly. Yeah, I okay. make sure that I had the right shoes before I show up. and Or if someone's coming to my house, I would have to spend like three hours cleaning before anyone showed up to have a hookup with me. You know, I'd be like vacuuming. That'd be too exhausted. It'd be, he'd, they'd show up and it'd be like, I'm sorry. I just dusted this whole place. I'm tired, you know. And don't get um, fingerprints on the nightstand. Yeah. I mean, does that stuff go through guys' heads? Probably not. It's probably just I, me, I'm I sure. don't think so. And again, because yeah. you've been married so long, yeah. that, you know, your train of thought definitely goes into a different station um, where, it, it, yeah, if you're single and you're sort of used to this dynamic, it, th that stuff's not um, really probably in front of mind. For most of us. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good for you guys then. You know, you don't have to live in this shit show of a brain of mine. Because um, seriously, I'd be like, do I have good enough sheets on? Are the <laughs> towels clean? Is the bath like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if I could do that all. Um, but hey, more power to all of you guys. I think it's awesome. I'm so intrigued by all of this hookup stuff. Um, just for me, I'm glad I don't have to get out there and, and be in that world. It's just too much for me. Just, but you know, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, you know, the bottom line is whatever works for you, right? That's the whole thing. Yeah. It's all about in everything in life. It's all about individual choices and being okay with our choices and, and respecting other people's yeah. choices too. You know, I, I'm seriously, I'm so like, all you guys that are out there hooking up, I'm like, you go, but I want to know about it. You know, like I want to know. That's why I'm, I, I feel bad asking all these really stupid 14 year old boy questions. Oh, I don't, I don't I, think they're stupid. And, uh, you okay. know, the fact that you brought up that you're willing to ask these questions because so many times with um, like married couples I've met, um, there tends to be a little bit of a judgment on a single folk sometimes where it's like, oh, you just hooked up or, oh, you, and it's like, well, yeah, because I'm not married and don't have the luxury of having somebody in my bed every night. So, right. yeah. So if we could take the judgment out of the equation, too, about hookups, that would be an awesome thing. 
Hey, I am totally going to be judgmental, but it's going to be about your sheets, your onesie, and what shoes you're wearing. I don't care about what you're doing with your life. I think it's I think it's really awesome, you know? Well, I think this will make you feel better so you get that image of the yellow and purple onesie out of your head. Okay. It was it was pure black, which I think you would be okay with. No, are you kidding? No. no. Do you need Please. some color? Is the, it's so 1995 pure right. black onesie. Come on. It is slimming. <laughs> well, did he need it? No. Oh, okay. All right. Michael and I love doing this show, and it, but it really wouldn't be possible without you and all of your support. I mean, this show doesn't cost you guys a dime, and we're certainly not getting paid to do anything. But to help us continue to bring these really important issues, these really important topics to the gay world out there, you can help us by becoming a member at Patreon. Members of the No Two Gays About It Patreon get exclusive access to bonus content like we moved our savage side eye and happy gay moment of the week over there to Patreon. We're also doing a monthly Q&A where Michael and I will answer whatever questions you throw at us. And also you'll get early access to all of our shows. So when you become a Patreon, you'll also be invited to join our very private No Two Gays About It Facebook community, where guys like us, the gay male over 50, get to talk to each other, share your thoughts, your ideas, whatever things are important to you. So Tom, after all of these conversations and thoughts on hookups where, where are you landing now are you a little bit more clear on what goes on and well i'm we're... actually right now on sniffies trying to get myself a little hookup no i'm kidding about that but no i'm still incredibly intrigued by it i it it kind of makes a little bit more sense to me because it was just this whole like <gasps> thing in front of me where i just didn't understand it um so thank you very much for sharing all of your personal knowledge with me um yeah you know i as we said i i think it just comes down to whatever floats your boat yeah. you know Everybody is an individual and not everybody wants to be in this long-term relationship like i'm in i mean I'm sure people would rather shoot their head off, but yeah, it's just whatever, whatever you want to do. It's individual choices, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the grass is always greener because I envy people who are in long-term relationships. I think it's awesome. But I think the bottom line here and what you and I do is we listen to each other and we're able to ask questions of each other without being embarrassed or feeling, eh, right. yeah. you know, and you, we both learn more about each other and uh, the opposite worlds that we exist in. And I think that's really important for all of us in our community to remember because there are so many different aspects of the community. And right. I think it makes us tighter when we do ask questions about things we don't understand within the community. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, that's the thing. We just have to be open to... Everyone has their way of living and just be okay with that. And we have the way that we're living and we just have to be okay with that and just all get together and be okay with each other, you know. But this whole thing about hookups, it's still so intriguing to me. I think it's great. And that's why I'm going to ask all of you guys out there, let us know. Let us know about your hookup. Like, how do you do it? Uh, if you're a guy over 60 or 70 and you know an app that works best for you, let us know about that. You know, leave a comment below and let us know your horror stories or your great stories or, hey, here's some good news. I met my husband on a hookup, you know, like whatever it is. I think that would be awesome. And also, Leave us a five-star review wherever you're listening to our podcast, because not only does it help us and pushes us up higher, but it gets us out there to more of the gay men who are over 50, because we want all of these guys to join our conversation. We want all of you to create this really great community for the over 50 gay male. And Michael, how else can they find us or get in touch with us? You guys can reach us across social media at No Two Gays About It. Just remember that it's the number two. Um, and that would be on Facebook and Threads and TikTok and Instagram. And you could also Gmail us anytime at no two gays about it at gmail.com. And a special thanks to our Patreon subscribers at the executive producer tier. Subscribers at this tier get early access to all of our episodes as well as all of the bonus content and 
We are going to personally thank each and every one of them at the end of every episode. Thank you so much to Ted Zalewski and Cesar Montiero for being so supportive, not only of us, but also of our show. We really appreciate it, guys. All right. Well, that does it for this week. Thank you all for exploring hooking up after 50 with us. But I think, Michael, next time we're going to have to come over into my world and talk about relationships or marriage after 50. Is that a deal? I can't wait. All righty then. All right. Until next time, Michael. Until next time, Tom. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you.